Okay, I am back. Um, the head, the president of the civil rights group Color of Change, after meeting with the white South African Elon Musk last November, that would be Rashad Robinson, he said in a phone interview yesterday, Sunday, that he thinks Elon Musk was, quote, lying all the way through the meeting, end quote. Well, duh. You think, my white brothers and sisters? I mean, that's what I was saying. Black folk know this. I mean, when you sit down across the uh, Zoom um, transmission from, from somebody like Elon Musk, and he's saying shit like, oh, yeah, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, have a content moderation council, and we're going to invite some of you uh, loudmouth. Oh, I'm sorry, some of you black civil rights leaders to advise the content moderation panel. Do you think black folks sitting there listening to that might have looked at each other, rolled their eyes a little bit, and went, "Hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, right." I don't know if Rashad Robinson did that, but he said Sunday that he thinks Musk, quote, was lying all the way through the meeting, end quote. Why, of course he was. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, it was Color of Change, uh, one of the civil rights groups that called for an advertising boycott of Twitter later that month, back in November. Because, you know, Robinson, Rashad Robinson, he's been black all his life, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. He has Malloy. He's been black all his life. So when he hears somebody like Elon Musk saying this kind of shit, you know exactly what he's going to do next. Well, let's boycott because this is not going to happen. And it didn't. An analysis by the Washington Post discovered that back in November, late November, that more than a third of Twitter's top 100 advertisers had stopped or paused advertising on Twitter in the previous two weeks. Oh, well, that's just a real important statement of solidarity with people who just want equal justice under law, right? I'm going to pause my advertising. I'm not going to take it all away, but I'll pause. That'll slap Elon Musk on his knuckles like he's going to notice that. Oh, come the hell on. But I'll pause. I won't advertise for, mm, let me think, um, two weeks. But then I'll be back. So a third of Twitter's top 100 advertisers stopped advertising on that racist sewer. A third. 33%. What does that what does that say? Does it say anything? Well, it, it, it speaks volumes to me. It says that sixty seven percent of advertisers, American companies, for the most part, I would imagine, don't give a shit. Oh, Elon Musk is defending uh, Scott uh, uh, Adams, who is a racist son of a bitch who uh, uh, made just really. Terrible things, said terrible things on Scott Adams' YouTube channel about black folk. Oh, so what? You know, I got to make some money. And I'm not going to stop advertising on Twitter. Why should I? I don't give a shit about uh, black folk, green folk. I don't care. The only color I know is the color of money. God damn. (sighs) Now, on Sunday, Rashad Robinson President of Color of Change said the boycott is still active, even though, here you go, you knew this was coming, even though some companies that initially signed onto it have since, in Rashad's words, snuck back onto the platform. Ow! Sneaky little devils. They snuck back. Maybe nobody will see that we're advertising on the platform again. Well, if that's the case, you dumb bastards. If nobody's going to notice that you're back, well, then that means your advertising is totally ineffective. You want people to notice you're back. What do you mean snuck back? Come on, Rashad. They didn't sneak back. 
They just they just walked through the goddamn door. They just walked in. Hey, we're back. We did our little boycott for a couple of weeks. The Negro's satisfied now? Huh? Huh? Good God. So, Rashad Robinson, over the weekend, he restated his call for advertisers to stop spending money on Twitter in light of these latest remarks from this racist son of a bitch from South Africa, Elon Musk. Robinson said in a statement, quote, We think that companies that continue to advertise on Twitter are making a choice. A choice about what they're willing to tolerate. And we will continue to let the public understand and know about that choice. End quote. How, how, how difficult it is getting. I'm going to talk about me for a minute, okay? I'm going to talk about me, Mike Malloy. This is about me, just me. How difficult it's getting for me to continue to to live in this, to swim in this muddy river. You know what I'm saying? No, no, seriously. I've I've quoted um, Leonard Cohen before, one of his songs, where he says, referring to America, I uh, 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 I love the country, but I hate the scene. And the first time I heard that, I thought, amen, brother. Yes, I, I, I know what you mean. But as this continues to build and build, and more and more of these voices seem to command media attention and the attention of so much of the public, and they continue their racist or anti-Semitic or anti-immigrant or anti-gay or whatever it is, this anti-anti-anti-this and anti-that, Crap that comes flowing out of their mouths like so much regurgitation, which is exactly what it is. It's getting harder and harder for me to stay here. Okay, enough about me. I just had to get that out. Back to this bastard Elon Musk, the white South African, who hates... I mean, he was, he was injected with hatred. He was fed hatred. Hatred was forced into every pore in his little body as he was growing up for 18 years in apartheid South Africa. And he has long criticized in this country what he now calls the woke mind virus. <laughs> the woke mind. In other words, stay asleep. Don't wake up. Don't face the truth. Just follow Uncle Elon. And the term woke, I I mean, it's my understanding that it started among black activists and it was, it meant awareness of and vigilance against the white racism that pervades American society. Just wake up and smell the racism. That's all it means. And, and you know, when I first understood what the term meant, I thought, well, surely that's directed to white people. You know, be woke. Because black people don't need to wake up to this shit. Are you kidding me? Come on. I, I mean, really, ask one of your black friends. And if you don't have any, just ask somebody on, on the train or the bus or somebody is somebody you're sitting next to on a plane. Hey, listen, uh, did you ask a black person? Hey, did you did you uh, do you believe that racism pervades America? Now, of course, if you ask the black person sitting to your right that question, you know, he may or she may look at you and go, hmm, what's this about? <laughs> How can I answer this? This white person is asking me if I believe racism pervades American society. What? What? (laughs) You probably won't get an answer. But the term woke, and you've noticed this, I'm sure, in the couple of years since it's been out, 
It's been co-opted by the American Nazis as as a pejorative, as something. And that's how you slam people. Oh, you must be one of these woke people, right? And it, it it's sort of gotten the the same sense to it that the term politically correct. Remember that one when that one came out? That that term came out what twenty five years ago, a long time ago. Politically correct. Huh? And now the term woke is used the same way politically correct is used. It means you are betraying whatever idea you might have, my white brother or sister, you are betraying your belief in white supremacy, in white advantage, uh, in white privilege. You're betraying that by being politically correct. Because politically correct used to mean fairness. Can't you be fair? Can't you at least be fair? Can't you at least advocate for equal justice, for equal opportunity, for equal respect, for equal honor? Can't you? Can't you do that? And the sad answer to that question, I know from my own personal experience, that's impossible to feel that way without re-educating yourself. I'm talking about white people now. Without re-educating ourselves. We, we didn't choose racism. I didn't choose it. If you're white, you didn't choose it. If you're black, you didn't choose to live in a racist country. You didn't choose any of this. Neither did I. So I'm not talking about guilt. You know, screw a bunch of guilt. Guilt is no damn good. What is good is action. Is action, positive action. Like, okay, I see what has happened. I understand what has happened. Now, what can I do about it? Well, there's only one thing that we white people can do about it. Only one thing. But if enough of us do it, it'll overcome this problem. And that is to educate ourselves about the truth. That's all. Just the truth. I'm not talking about any kind of political or racial philosophy. Screw that. Just the truth. That's all. But what did Colonel Jessup say? You can't handle the truth. I love that line, right? From a few good men. You remember that. You can't handle the truth. Uh, most white people in this country, uh, okay, uh, that's an unfair statement. A lot of white people in this country, a number of white people in this country, out of hell with it. Most white people in this country cannot handle the truth of racism in this country. Because it is so, so broad. So pervasive, so institutionalized. Man. And for a multiracial society like the United States, it is the element, racism, that will destroy everything. Everything that, that, that we tried to, uh, to do, everything that we have tried to, um, uh, to, to, to make this country stand for, everything. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever 
over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.